Here's what's new in the Reaper 719 update. We have changes to the ruler, the metronome, and a vertical guideline for the edit cursor. Appearance, optionally display vertical line at mouse position with various snapping options. So we're gonna find this option in Reaper's preferences. And if we go to appearance, there's a new option here down at the bottom, display vertical line at mouse position. So we can enable that. And we have a few options here. Do not snap indicator line, respect toolbar snap button, ignore snap if shift key held, ignore snap if command key held, Ignore snap if shift or command key held. So let's do respect toolbar snap button. And apply that. Now, as I move the edit cursor around, you can see that there is this new vertical line wherever my mouse is positioned and it is snapping to the nearest grid line. Now, if I turn off snapping in my main toolbar, that's this magnet button. Now I can see that at any position and I can click anywhere and looking at these options again, we can have a do not snap indicator line. And if snapping is on and I click somewhere, it's going to snap back to the previous line. So it's up to you whether you want to continuously see that, that guideline uh, only snapped or only snapped when snapping is relevant. And you can also have that with command key held control on windows or with shift. You can customize these colors by going to the theme tweaker and search for position. Add action to move time selection or loop point start end points to edit cursor, preserving length. So this is an interesting one. If I just search move time selection cursor in here, we're gonna find time selection, move edit cursor left, creating time selection, and then move edit cursor right, creating time selection. These ones aren't new, but what is new, move end point to cursor, preserve length. Move end, move start point to cursor, preserve length. All right, so we'll just start off with a short time selection. I'll move my edit cursor to, let's say, bar 13. And then if I run move start point to cursor, preserve length, that time selection is going to move to the edit cursor position. And if I do this move end point to cursor, so that's this point, it's going to snap that position there. And I do have a, a preference to move my edit cursor position uh, when creating a time selection. So that is uh, edit behavior, move edit cursor on time selection change. So with this off, that would look like this. So the edit cursor would stay at the end. And the same thing would happen with a loop. Move end point to cursor, preserve length. My loop points are linked to time selection, which again is in the preference um, link loop points to time selection. But if those are off, I'll have independent looping and time selection changes. So there's a time selection, there's a, a loop selection, and that can be snapped to the edit cursor position independent of the time selection. Actions window, improve behavior of find key window, allowing window to stay open on match. So back to the action list, uh, there's this find shortcut key. What's new is this toggle automatically close window on matching action. And it will say, if nothing is found, it will just keep this window open. Uh, so you can keep this window open and you can tap your, your keys. And if it found something or not, uh, if it found something, it will take you to that in the uh, action list. And otherwise, it can stay open. So for, for the old behavior, this automatically closed window on matching action toggle should be on. Uh, I quite like this new function as well. Metronome and click. Add graphical control for editing metronome pattern. Support triplets, three over two, three over four, Support double length click pattern when using double speed metronome. Support up to four different beat types or samples. All right, so this is a pretty awesome update. I wasn't sure about this at first. Reading the description, I was like, ah, who cares? I don't use it that much. And then I actually tried it and it's a pretty good update, I have to say. So instead of just a high beat and a low beat, like a primary and a secondary beat, 
We now have up to four different sounds, and these sounds can be uh, sine, triangle, square, or sine plus square, synthesizer beeps at different frequencies, and we can program which ones play on each beat. And then there's a little plus button here. Zoom in a little bit. So there's a little plus button here, and you can um, add in additional sub beats there. And this reset button is, is new. It will reset the frequencies to the defaults. And there's also for click pattern, we can set this to 2x. And if you click on uh, any of the plus buttons, we can also do reset pattern to default. And now uh, let's say beat five goes to here. And then the last two beats does this, uh, this new option. So let's play that back. Pretty cool, right? And if we switch back to one X, it will be kind of the normal, normal four, bar, four beat pattern, but we can set this to um, three over four. Or we can set this to three over two uh, for each of these steps, something like that. And we can also just entirely skip a step. So uh, let's reset this back to default. And so let's say beat three is just skipped. You can also set this to double and it will automatically like repeat whatever the, uh, the four, uh, the basic pattern is. Make this a uh, triplet here. it's suddenly very vibey. Like it, there's actually more of a groove that you can accomplish with this. Uh, let's keep that, but we'll go to the different sounds. So there, that was the sine wave. This is now the triangle. And square. And the sine plus square. There's an overall volume and then the relative volume of the uh, the additional beats. So uh, we can also combine this with samples. So I've got two samples loaded and the rest will be the rest will be the synth sounds. So that's with the the main metronome and up in the toolbar. This also works with the click source item. So we go to insert click source. Now this is a metronome item and it's automatically got that uh, that pattern from the, the metronome that we set. Uh, and if we go to source properties, we can see the settings actually didn't, I don't think it did get my, uh, my samples correctly. I'll save this as default and okay. And the benefit of the click source item is that you can actually modify this. You can just make a split like any item. And let's say, uh, the metronome turns down in this section. So this could be like a the outro or the intro of song where you, you need the timing reference, but it can't allow, you can't allow it to bleed through the headphones. Long sustained part or a finger picked part, you want to turn down the metronome as low as possible just to uh, avoid click bleed into the microphones. Um, or you can have the, the click drop out entirely, or you can have, let's say this section, um, it just uses a entirely different pattern. So, We'll have these two items and they'll play different patterns. And when using these with time signature markers, these should automatically update and you can also set the pattern from the time signature marker interface. I'm just randomly clicking on those things, but get rid of these and put on the regular metronome. So we're changing the metronome pattern based on the uh, time signature marker. Very, very flexible. And you can do a lot with this. Uh, this is a great addition. Media Explorer. Add option to display preview position and time selection in beats for audio files using embedded or estimated tempo. 
clear time selection by pressing escape key while preview area is focused. Support navigating through editable metadata columns with left, right arrow keys in addition to up, down arrow keys. All right, so we're gonna go to the Media Explorer. And so if I navigate to some sort of uh, maybe a loop recording in the show menu, there's the option of displaying preview position four beats in audio files using embedded tempo um, in or in whole seconds or beats. So I'm going to check this box. Yeah, I can see that this is going up to about 16 bars. If we have a time selection, we can press escape and that will clear that time selection. As you may know, when we once we make a time selection, we can also set the exact position here in this text box. And let's do that beat two. And so that's ex starting at exactly the, uh, the first half note in that item. And if I drop that in, that should line up perfectly. The metadata for this, we can now um, start typing and then we can press the down arrows and we can press the left and right arrows. Uh, as, as long as you're in a, within the metadata section here, and then you can type in the information that you'd like. Title, album, description, comment fields, you can navigate through those with the up and down arrows now. And so even though I have up and down, left and right assigned to the different actions, that's sort of like automatically assigned as long as the text uh, is in focus. Ruler and grid. Add measures, fractions, ruler display mode. Add checkbox to project settings dialog to base ruler markings on customized project start measure. Add checkbox to time signature markers to reset measure grid. Add preference to reset grid labels at start of regions. Display labels at grid reset measures if possible. Add metronome grid display, which marks every metronome click. Support dotted note grid length in grid settings dialog. Let's return to the metronome. So we've got the, this wacky sort of pattern here, right? And if we go to the snap to grid window, uh, snap grid settings, and we look in the settings here, there's this new option for metronome. Now we actually see a grid line on each of those uh, metronome divisions that we selected. And this is fantastic for any time you've got, let's say the last section of the bar is always a triplet there wasn't really a good way of, of showing that in the grid lines and getting your snap uh, to that. So this is gonna be huge for editing. This is a really awesome option. So once again, that is a grid line setting. It's actually not a ruler setting. Um, I was getting confused about that, those settings. But within the ruler menu, there is this new option, measures fractions. Let's put this back to normal, let's say eighth. Uh, we're seeing these numbers in fractions of a whole bar rather than um, in decimals. So uh, normally there's measure, measures beats and uh, beats minimal, pretty similar looking. And, um, and now there's this measures fractions. Support for dotted note grid divisions, we can uh, set this to one eighth. We can just type that in. Uh, and add in a period, and that should give us a dotted eighth note grid divisions or sixteenths. You can type in the grid value that you want here um, and just add in a T for triplet or a period for dotted eighth note, sixteenth note grid lines. So that's about it for this update. A pretty small update, but those new options for the metronome are fantastic. Mouse cursor, vertical line, I think is really great. Um, yeah, good update. Thank you, Kakos, for that. Thank you all for watching. Hope you've enjoyed this video. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Follow me on Facebook and Twitter. Support the Reaper blog through Patreon. Visit reaper.blog for more tutorials.